Hello, everyone. I'm Prank Stallone, and I have a prepared statement. As you know, the Not Even a Show is a prank show. I think it's safe to say that any time you buy a ticket to a live prank show, you're taking some level of risk. <laughs> with that in mind, I would like to announce that we will be doing a one-hour silent show with no content. <laughs> as a hilarious nod to the style of content we make. Essentially, it is a prank on you. And before anyone says it is lazy and dishonest, please consider that it may actually be a brilliant subversion of the whole medium, <laughs> and not lazy at all. In fact, in seven to ten years, the majority, majority of you will probably look back and, at this and fully appreciate how funny and memorable it was. I will now sit down in silence for 55 minutes. <laughs> Okay, what the fuck is this? Where's Chris? Uh, what do you mean? You're looking at him right now. <laughs> You're not Chris. You're Ben. I know you. Uh, this is, look, this is my talking. name on the fucking show. Like, you can't just sit here for an hour. People flew here for this. You can't just fucking sit on the stage for 55 minutes. I don't care if you think it's genius or what. Called a perfect prank. It's not a perfect prank. It's a shitty prank. They want to see a fucking show. And freeze. <laughs> and right here we can see an example of an absolutely flawless, perfectly executed prank. <laughs> the audience has been pranked. The organizer has been pranked. Now it's time to really start the show. Could the openers please leave the stage so the headliners could enter? <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, what makes NEAS so special? And I told them, I think it's the honesty. And to be honest, there was nobody that asked me that question. I just wanted to talk about it. What makes NEAS so special is how unafraid and unfiltered it is. So many shows nowadays, guys, block party, they're just pandering to the audience, squirting milk from their sanctimonious teat into a spoon so they can feed it into their audience's gullet. It's fucking sad. Around these parts, if we hear the word pandering, we just think someone's talking about a ring with some kind of panda design on it because the other <laughs> word is not in our vocabulary. We do what we do, like it or not. <laughs> so attractive Oh man, look at their thighs They must be quite active <laughs> Oh man, look at this crowd Look at that bone structure, wow Getting a little nervous now, cause they also look quite smart. 
And all the causes they support I'd argue for them all in court I guess you could say we're the same sort Me and all of them They look so damn good You take one look at this group And you'll get full wood Please ignore that last line I said more than I should just want to say hi to my mom and dad who are here They look nice and I wouldn't think twice If they needed cash or a place to crash It wouldn't mean nothing to me Because they all seem trustworthy And they seem like they hate pandering That's why I love them, cause we hate the same things Yeah, I tell you, if I had a hundred rings I'd marry all of them at this crowd, how good they are. I took one look at their faces and I got rock hard. Oh, did I spoil the nice song by going too far? Hello everyone, welcome to the show. We got a great show for you tonight. I do, just by round of applause, who here is a fan of comedy? Yeah. All right, okay. All right, okay. So there's three types of comedy that you can do uh, currently. And they are, of course, stand-up comedy. We all know stand-up comedy. And improv comedy and interview comedy. So we have all the three big uh, comedy things tonight. We will be doing improv. You'll see some improv from a very uh, pretty accomplished improv troupe uh, by the name of uh, Bands a Flagrant Flying Fuck Fest. So zero applause for that. <laughs> so this will be their second live show that they're ever doing. And the first one did not go well. <laughs> So we're hoping to improve on that. And then we have a very fun stand-up comedy segment. Uh, I don't know if anybody is a big fan of Tony Hinchcliffe and Rogan and the boys over at the Mothership. But I've been watching a lot of the Kill Tony show. Uh, and so we will be doing our own version of it. It is the Kill Daryl show with Daryl Kraft, stand-up comedian. And we put a bucket out uh, at the front. I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, you know, sign up, put your name in. You can do one minute. That's how it works on the Kill Tony show. So sign up. You can do one minute. Anybody in the crowd could come up here. Anyone who signed up. And uh, yeah, no, and not a single person did sign up. <laughs> but we have a couple of comedians. Uh, we have a guest judge who will come out uh, as well. Uh, Stand-up comedy from John Collins, Stefan Heck. Uh, and then we have an interview uh, with uh, Jesse Farrar as well uh, via satellite. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit about myself. <laughs> I, uh, I, have, uh, I have recently become a... Father. I've recently become a father. I have a son who is absolutely enormous. It's a thing, it's a, you know, when, is, when your child is very, very young, you don't have that many things to be proud about. They don't really do anything in the beginning, you know? So you got a real limited thing. And one of the things that you can, though, is the size. People are like, hey, how's, your, how's Charlie doing? What are you fucking talking about? Look at how fucking big he is. He's gigantic, though, truly. We're hoping he's, you know, seven, eight feet. We're, gonna, we're hoping that he's extremely tall and, like, very, very scary and intimidating. And then when you get to know him, you're like, oh, fuck, he's actually really nice da deep down. <laughs> I have a friend who, uh, he told me, he's like, he has a son, and he's like, oh, man, people always try to tell you that your life's going to change. 
and then you like can't do anything anymore and it's like it ruins everything but like that's actually not the case at all you can still do your stuff and it's like you can still live your life and you don't need to worry so much and I was super like I sort of like, I didn't think he was, I was like, I think he's probably wrong about that, you know? But then I actually, I've had, now that I have, uh, I've had a kid for six months, I was like, holy shit, like, you know, I realized that my friend Jeremy's actually like a really terrible father and partner. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it up for Bands Flagrant Flying Fuckfest! Uh, we're gonna do some improv. Hey, excuse me, but this is we did we we had an agreed upon we had an agreed upon entrance we were gonna do. I don't wanna do that. We're gonna do the entrance. Let's go play come out and let's uh replay the music please once we exit the stage, uh uh Dern, thank you. Send in the cloud. All right, thank you so much, and hello, everybody. Hello, welcome. We are bands. Flagrant. Flying. Fuck. First. Thank you. We got a lot of energy. We we went to we've ta taken classes lately. We had a teacher who taught us. Hey, if you're a little bit light on the punchlines, come heavy with the energy. <laughs> so we're trying to work within that kind of like, you know, it's like, we're just coming at you so fast. Was it funny? I don't know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Ban is the expert uh, yeah. on the improv. So how does these, how does the improv comedy show work? Uh, we could get a suggestion. Well, let's get a suggestion, like, please. Uh, uh, a relationship between two people. <laughs> okay, a relationship. Hot wife. Hot what? Okay, so we got a, we somebody has suggested bull and hot wife. Um, so are you are you are you familiar there, with what that is? Is there anything else? <laughs> no, I believe we're gonna do, we're gonna go with bull and hot wife. So or do you know what that is? Uh yeah. <laughs> okay, that's very cool. <laughs> So for anyone who doesn't know what a bull uh, hot wife is, basically it's a situation in the swinging lifestyle and the pineapple lifestyle. It would be when a single guy elevates himself to a situation where he is so sought after that they're trying, you know, hot wives. That's somebody who is married to a cuckold. And a cuckold is somebody who's like, hey, you know what? I, you know, hey, I love pounding my wife, but you know what's better when someone else goes at it? Yeah, that, well, that's why I asked if there's anything else. Yeah. <laughs> So would you like to be the bull or the hot wife? Uh, we, get, we just kind of figure it out. Okay. Or you can choose. No, yeah, I would like you to choose <laughs> whether or not you would prefer to be the bull or the hot wife. Um, the bull. Ooh. <laughs> What's the issue? What's the major conflict? Multivariate Sorry? Multivaried calculus? Um, are we good at it or <laughs> bad? Or... One of them is shoplifting? Yeah. That's a very interesting scenario. <laughs> I don't know why you'd be at the store with your bowl. China shop. You'd be in a china shop. That's... <laughs> hey, excuse me, excuse me. Don't ever be funnier than us. <laughs> That's the number one rule of improv. <laughs> Never be funnier than the performer. Okay, so we are out. We're, we're getting sheets. We're having to buy sheets. That's, that's very believable. <laughs> and so we're getting sheets, and my, you're the hot wife. Uh, you're yeah. the bull. And so the bull is shoplifting, and I'm the hot wife, and he's being caught shoplifting. Okay, but then we need another person. <laughs> Does anybody want to come up on stage? Anybody, round of applause, anybody want to come up and play the role? No, all right, sounds good. 
Perfect. Okay, so uh, I will it, um, I will be I will play dual roles. I will be okay, okay. I'm the security guard. All right, and action. Um, it, my jacket's just always like this. Just, uh, Are you a bull? <laughs> Uh, you yeah, bet. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hey. I've always wondered about this. <laughs> what is it that, what makes you want to do it? <laughs> like, with the bull, like, why don't you want to have sex with your husband? Uh, no, 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 you're not that bull. <laughs> Uh, well, the thing is, it's like, I still love my husband, but it's almost like the thing, he gets more horny from it, to be honest. Like, he absolutely loves it. Oh, so would you say it's more of a situation where he's sort of into it, and like, or would it be more of a situation where you're like into it? <laughs> hey, quick, sneak away. And scene! Okay, I don't wanna I don't wanna be I don't wanna get you guys, but that's that's that is ten times better than any scene we've ever done. <laughs> we are never gonna replicate that. Like I don't mean tonight, I mean ever in the history of us talking to each other, we'll never be that funny ever again. So but let's get another suggestion. Uh, do you have any what should is there other types of improv we can do? Let's do the arms one. Uh, I, I be your arms? Yeah. You guys know the arms one? Yeah, it's very, very, uh, it's a very strange one. It's, it's very unfunny. <laughs> so we should give that one a shot, definitely. But uh, let's yeah. get a suggestion um, on uh, location that we could be at. The dentist. the dentist. Okay, so we're at the dentist office, and are you going to be the bull or the hot wife? <laughs> Uh, no, you know, let's, let's, I mean, that is kind of, no, let's, let's see, I don't know why you're putting the mic well, in the I'm stand. Gonna, I thought it was going to be your arms. Oh, that's right. That's right. So you're doing the right thing. Okay, here we go. So we're at the dent, we're the dentist. Uh, okay. So like, uh, oh, I'm so horny. <laughs> Uh, that's not what I do when I get horny. No, I'm just kidding around. I'm just joking around. I, uh, I'm kidding about the horny thing. Um, well, yeah, what, uh, left or right? Uh, which one? Which scalp? Which I use the scalpel or the... Uh, hey, so anyway, I'm a dentist. And, uh, this is, I was at the dentist late, recently. Because we go as well. You know what I mean? Oh, so oh, what? Are we gonna do it on ourselves? We gotta go to the. Oh, we still doing the hands. <laughs> Forgot about the hands altogether. Because I started thinking about the dentist, and I know this is, but they don't. They don't have any. They haven't upgraded the the stuff well enough. Do you know what I mean? They have like a. They have like. They're still just chiseling away with a metal sort of hook or whatever. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> okay. So, can you, how do we get out of a scene like this? He, his suggestion was to do a big punchline. <laughs> Built more cabaret, Vancouver, BC. Daryl, Daryl Craft. Stand up comedy's dying. It's nearly dead. Oh, quick, get the defibrillator. 
get the defibrillator, and it's saying the R word. <laughs> how, how, uh, how many people, by round of applause, this is always fun. This is always fun, because it kind of gets a feeling of uh, how you're growing, your, how your personal brand is growing. How many by round of applause have uh, seen me out on tour before, Daryl Kraft? <laughs> Has anybody uh, seen any of my, my internet stuff? A couple of people have seen it online, yeah. Yeah, some of those, vi I'm get, trying to get some of those vi video, viral videos taken down. <laughs> We're gonna do a, a, a show here that is called Kill Daryl. I am really into stand-up comedy and like to me, it's, it's like, it's one of the last sort of places that people can tell the truth. <laughs> you know, you'll see people in, in journalism and they'll be doing a story and you look at it and you say, oh, I guess they're, they are not able to tell the truth. I guess that's where we're at in the world today. And then all of a sudden, you turn on Joe Rogan. That's weird, I, I, I write it in to pause there for large applause. For Rogan. Thank you, yeah. And then you hear Rogan and he's telling it like it is. You know, he's on stage. He's, uh, he's, he's working so hard that he's sweating He's sweating largely through his breasts. <laughs> and, and you watch that guy doing it and you're like, holy shit, you know? This guy's up there, he doesn't even care about, you know, he doesn't care about anything about the rules. And that's what's cool, you know? A lot of people is like, you gotta follow all these rules. You gotta do the punchline at the end. <laughs> oh, the joke has to be funny. <laughs> Says who? <laughs> Not Joe Rogan. He doesn't care about your rules, Karen. <laughs> Fuck, I've started calling people Karen lately. <laughs> Fucking really get some. <laughs> I'll be talking to somebody and they're like, hey, uh, excuse me, excuse me, sir, could you, uh, you know, could you please leave this area? It's, it's uh, not, de it's designated for, you know, not for people like you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Karen. You know, and it's like, they, you know, they'll just totally no-sell me on it. It's super funny. So on Kill Daryl, we always have a special judge who helps to judge the comedians. And the fun thing is, like, obviously, I'm sort of the comedy part of it. And we'll, we like to get something, because it's a comedy show, but it's fun to get somebody who's a non-comedy person who's kind of comes at it from a different angle. And so we got somebody here to do uh, the guest judging who's not involved in comedy. Give it up for Brian Quinby, please. <laughs> you grab your seat right there. How's it going? I'm going to come sit beside you there. Brian, everybody, you guys uh, know Brian? That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I already this, this, this is an unopened one. I already, but that's for the other, um... There's no other guest. Some people say, oh, it's, uh, more, it's more skillful to do clean comedy. It is. <laughs> Some people say, oh, it's more skillful to do clean comedy. And when, in fact, it's not. It's actually more skillful to, like, you know, it'd be like, f fuck. <laughs> you know, because it's like, you know, you're walking around and, and hanging around and, you know, depending on who you hang around with, that might be a, quite a shocking word to you. And then it depends on who you're talking to. You might need to use bigger words to shock the people. And then that's when you get in trouble and they don't let you come on the radio anymore. <laughs> when was the last time you got really horny? <sighs> I don't know. Month? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you remember it? Nope. Okay, so you can Two weeks. Like... Okay, so... <laughs> Three months. Do you... What's the normal amount? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to say. 
I think it's normal to be, is it normal to get horny about once a week? Less. What, what do you guys think? Who, who, let's, okay, let's do it. Be honest about it too. <laughs> Except for my mom and dad. <laughs> who gets horny once a month? Woo! Okay, who gets horny like once every two weeks? Woo! Once a week? Yeah! Stop, are you doing it? But no, I want to be the one, I want to be with the most people. <laughs> I understand. That's the, it's the game, we're gamifying it. So like, every day, yeah. who gets horny every day? Woo, yeah! Okay, that's fair, yeah. Me. That's cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's probably, that's cool. I mean, a little bit of a younger crowd, because I think it is safe to say, <laughs> when you get older, you get less horny, sorry. We have the bucket, it's out there. We, I mentioned not a single person signed up, uh, which is an issue, it becomes an issue, obviously, but we do have some of our great regulars, and we have some of, this guy's a golden ticket winner. Okay, okay thank you. Oh, do you want to, here, come on out. This is, sorry, I should, yeah, I should mention, I've been, I've had a number of uh, pretty serious threats against my life lately. And so I have personal security. And this is my personal security guy, Greg. And he comes around everywhere. He's fucking great, he's wild, man. He can't even break this guy, man. He's like, oh! <laughs> he's fucking tough as hell, man. He's a very, very, very shady guy. Let's bring out our first, uh, come here, nobody in the bucket again. Uh, oh, wait, hey, we got one in there. Okay, that's exciting, but let's bring out our golden ticket winner. This guy is a stand-up comedian from Vancouver, British Columbia. He's also an improviser uh, with bands Flagrant Flying Fuckfest. Let's give it up for uh, band Fawcett, please. <laughs> So the way it works, everybody, <laughs> is the comedian gets one, two minutes or so uninterrupted, and then afterwards, we sort of roast him up. And without further ado, Ban Fawcett, everybody. Hi. Uh, Tough I'm, start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw a news story, and uh, this guy, he chased another guy, uh, and they, he murdered him. And it was, it was 7.45 in the morning. And then uh, he chased another guy, and then he, he cut his hands off. Yeah, that's a famous but... story. I just wanted to stop him for a second. We all know the story, and it's very depressing. I hope this is going somewhere. <laughs> this is a very sad story, and it's quite alarming, actually. I want to hear a... it. Nobody knows it. Let him go. There's a number of stranger attacks that are happening in the city. <laughs> And it's a very serious problem, and we don't like stranger attacks around here. But, but I know what his big problem was. Uh, he didn't have his morning coffee yet. Yeah, no, that's funny, but no, seriously, it, that wasn't the issue. This is, I promise, do not look into the story. It's very, very sad. It's very, very sad. It's, it's actually not something even you should be joking about. Like, I can joke about, I, I see humor and everything, but that's maybe a bit too far. Uh, well, I think being an actor is really easy because... Whoa, there might be actors here. <laughs> I mean, just say, go do it, but tread lightly. Um... Uh, because there's, there's child actors. Oh, no, no. There's like, that's the only job where there's like a child that does it often. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate you touching on child exploitation. It is a, it's also an issue, I think. The parents get the money. That's fucked up. <laughs> well, not for the parents. Yeah, but they're obviously exploiting their children in that situation. That's you know, fine. You, know, I, I you have to give them everything. You could maybe make a few bucks off them. In the... You think that you, you think you're entitled to a little bit. I think that's the way they think of it, unfortunately. Some payback, yeah. But that's a really bad way of thinking of it, I feel like. Sorry, you do your punchline. Go ahead. Yeah, I just... <laughs> uh, well, well th there's no uh, child writers. Or, uh... <laughs> there's no child doctors. That's what, they should say that in, in every interview with an actor. They'd be like, oh, what do you think about um, a lot of nine-year-olds can do your job? 
That's a good point. <laughs> it's a very easy job. <laughs> It's a great point, uh, yeah. No, it's, uh, uh, I think about that all the time, actually, how easy actors have it, you know? Their job is so easy, and some of us are out there working very hard all the time. Um, well, I think my, my other one's worse. What's maybe, that? Maybe I should just end. So you're calling it? <laughs> uh, Give uh, it up for Ben Fawcett, everybody! <laughs> Next comedian coming to the stage, Stefan Heck. Hey, how's it going? Oh, oh, this guy does not look good. <laughs> what? This guy does not look funny. You know, you just see somebody come up and you see a comic for the first time, and it's like this guy doesn't look like he's got it. He, he, he hasn't said anything me, yet. He asked me which side of the stage to come up oh, earlier yeah. oh. before we even came up. Oh, here. oh, oh we were, yeah. So I prepared for the show. We might have a first timer, folks. This is exciting. <laughs> here we go. Let's hear. Let's hear. He him. said, "How do you walk on stage?" Yeah. <laughs> do I? I was like, I can do, help, but I never. Is it this done. way or do I? Because you guys are like judging me, right? I could turn and just I, do your jokes, please. Okay, but to but okay to the crowd. But do you need to see my facial expressions for some I, of the jokes I, to I, land? I, I could never see your face again. I'd be fine. Let him go. You look ugly. Jesus Christ! It's a roast show. Get used to it. Um, you look ugly and undesirable. You smell good. I'm what smelling you from right here. You smell good. What the fuck, man? You're not getting the spirit of it. I don't want him to feel ugly. Can I read off? Because I, I have it written. Yeah, no, of course. That's yeah, fine. No, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Janine okay. Garofalo does it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see. It's cool that you're that you're keeping up with comedy. What? <laughs> what if somebody yelled out something in the, in the audience, and it's a key, a good thing to do during a comedy show if one single person yells something out and completely derail the show, <laughs> and just make that the focal point of the show? What did you say about that? You're requesting a, a joke from this fucking open mic comic? <laughs> Unbelievable. I have new material, so. Yeah, are you gonna do some new topical yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, not topical. Well, kind of topical, it happened today. Oh, great. Yeah. Great, um, great. I went, uh, I went to get coffee this morning at, uh, at Starbucks. I was there. This doesn't, that's not necessary. <laughs> what would actually possibly help us though is if you could fact check the joke. I did, I, okay, yeah, I got you. But they, so they have pumpkin uh, coffee there now. Do they really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh no, that sort of speaks for itself. <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? What'd We're, you get? Well, not the not. I mean, sir. Oh, you know what? I did actually get the pumpkin coffee. <laughs> That's fact checked. Um, and I, this will kind of blow your mind. It was good. Because I thought so. The joke earlier, I thought it was gonna be bad. So we're gonna bring up our next comic, and this guy, our final before the bucket poll, and this guy is a stand-up comedian, and he organized the event, and you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He's got the money. <laughs> he's handling the money. He's giving it out. You get the money. You get the money, Daryl. Here's a little couple of shekels for you. <laughs> So keep that in mind, he is giving the money out. So I, if that's, if you notice I'm a little bit, that's the reason. Give it up for John Cullen, everybody. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. This is great. Uh, what a fun time. Good outfit. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see Smells you guys. Good uh, this, is, uh, this is crazy. My, uh, my wife, uh, Becca. Uh, yeah. They know my wife. Uh, my wife, Becca. Uh, my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. <laughs> hey, nice. That's a nice a beer. That's a nice a beer. <laughs> yeah. My... <laughs> God damn, that money, that movie was fucking good. God, they don't make them like that anymore. They simply don't make them you like could. that anymore. They could. They simply can't because. The guy who made them, it turns out, is a very bad guy. <laughs> they can't make them anymore because I don't, I don't want them to. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yep. 
Thank you. That's just, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And it made me think of when you're talking about anxiety, it's like, yeah, I... Not that funny to make fun of stuff like that. Well, it can be sometimes. So there's one person who's put their name, and I really do appreciate it, because this is going to be a lot of fun. Somebody's put their name in the hat from the audience to come up and do a little bit of stand-up, and hopefully, I mean, there's not that many people here, so because it's just one name, and it's sort of a common name. Um, but let's hear it for Greg. Yes! Yes! So, yeast infections, right? I, uh, I get yeast infections from time to time. But uh, when anything negative happens in my life, I always try and turn it into a positive, you know, find a silver lining, you know, right? You know? And one of the positives that's come from me getting yeast infections is it's, uh, it's gotten me more involved in the community. You know? Because what I have done is I have formed an emotional support group for other men who suffer from yeast infections. And we get together at Denny's slash Bar One every second Wednesday of every month if a anyone wants to come. But it's a tight-knit group, the Yeasty Boys. You know, there are many of us. And I think there are more men out there who are suffering from yeast infections, but I think they may be suffering in silence, you know? And I think they may be suffering in silence because they're embarrassed. And I think they may be embarrassed because yeast infections are primarily known as a women's health issue, right? But I think all the male yeast infection needs is like a little rebrand, you know, or something like a little name change, right? Like what if instead of calling it a male yeast infection, we called it something like uh, athlete's penis, right? <laughs> That's cool. That's tough. You know, it's like, I don't have a yeast infection. I, have a, I got a fucking beast infection. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going yeast mode. Oh, I think that's my time. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was okay. I didn't know that you uh, did uh, comedy, Greg. I don't. So that was your, you're saying that was your first time ever first in front set, of First set, yeah. What'd you think, sir? That was real good. It was okay. I just feel like, really? Because you, you just know, you haven't done, that was the first time you've ever done it. Never, sir. I've ne watched a lot of Daryl Craft, and he, I think he's better than anything you've done. <laughs> yeah, he might may, may have gotten more, I guess, LPMs. <laughs> Let's laugh for a minute. His LPMs might have been higher, but um, I'm doing a lot of more vibe-based stuff nowadays. I tried to book somebody else as the guest. Dern, do you want to play the, play the call, please? Look, oh, I was looking to speak with Chip Wilson. Can I help you? Oh, hi, Mr. Wilson. Um, my name is Chris. I'm doing a show at the Biltmore Cabaret. <laughs> uh, coming up here, you know the you know the Biltmore, the famous Biltmore yeah. Cabaret. Yeah. Um, and so I was wondering if you wanted to come on and be a guest and do an interview on the show. It's sort of an interview kind of show, and we would love to have you on to talk to you. Possibly. Um, I've got to take a call in one minute here. So um, we are you... we are communist. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or like, like what you think is communist. And uh, what I really want to talk about is because you say we're living under communism. And if that's the case, why do you have so much money? I have so little money and I want to have the same amount of money as you like under communism. So can I have some of your money? Well, if you're going to work for 25 years, 18 hours a day, seven days a week. I did. I did that already and I didn't get as much money as you. <laughs> And if you're, that was actually, that was really him. <laughs> I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to tell you guys something here. This is, I, Daryl Craft. <laughs> it's me. Oh! 
We're running out of time. We have. We are five, running out of five time. minutes. How much time do we have left? Five actually? minutes. Six. Five minutes. Five minutes. Four minutes. Maybe like uh, eight. Three. Okay, yeah, I'm hearing about. I heard a lot of different numbers. <laughs> Eight minutes? Let's play that real quick, then. Hey, hello, everyone. Hey, wait, Hi. Dude, stop, Hi. stop. That's a good hat. Turn it off. No. I need to give, uh, I need to give a little background to this. Um, also... It's just dawning. If you're, it's just dawning on me now that this video, it, it's, it's purporting to be a live video. <laughs> like after I start playing this video, I'm going to pretend to have a conversation <laughs> with this man. So pausing it was probably not the best thing if I wanted to keep up that illusion. I mean, I know you guys you knew probably, but still, um, I just want to give some background. If, if, uh, I don't think many of you were at the show t uh, two years ago. We did a show, uh, and not even a show, the first ever live show. A couple of people were there. So you guys remember that. It was a really good show. It was a really fun show. And then Jesse Farrar came on stage, and he ruined it. <laughs> he ruined the show, and he embarrassed me in front of my friends and my family. And, you know, I told him that. I said, you embarrass me, you owe me. You owe me on this. We need a big fucking story to, you know, a big classic JF story to bring it home, the closing story. And he agreed to it. And guess what? The incredible thing is, we've got him on the phone right now. <laughs> Give it up, Jesse. Hey, hello, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. Uh, happy to be here virtually, as the case may be. How you doing? How's everyone doing tonight? Well, yeah, we're, we need you to do the thing, though, the thing we agreed um, on. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so uh, glad to um, uh, be, be here and just uh, be sorry, it, in, the palm, in the palm of your hand. Uh, you know, whatever you, whatever you need me to do, I'm, I'm happy to do, so... I told you what I need you to do. I need you to fucking tell a banger of a story because you ruined last fucking two years ago show and you fucking owe it to me. So tell a great fucking story really. to bring the show home. My recollection of it was that it was an awesome show beloved by all and went off without a hitch. I don't really recall That was the rest of the show. Disaster or anything. I was just, I thought this was more like a cameo just kind of saying like, You're hey, you know, let's get cameo, ready for a great buddy. show tonight and sort of. I don't know, warming the crowd up? I thought I don't have like a story prepared or anything. The I don't know what I would even say. It's plenty just like warm. A, this is like you, you caught me like in between stuff right now. I don't really have anything um uh prepped or whatever. But yeah, happy to just you know say hello and tip of the cap and uh, have a great show, everybody, and uh, nice to see you and so on. So Buddy, tell a five minute fucking story right now with a minimum of twelve punchlines. Uh well, uh okay, yeah. So I have one. Um <laughs> It was actually a pretty funny story, uh, to tell you the truth. The well, other day, I was, um, I was out with my wife, and we were uh, driving around in the um, car. Well, it's a minivan. Um, it's a, well, I'll tell you the truth. Let's start it over. I, it was my minivan first. Holy fuck. Um, and then we got to the point where she was taking the kids to school more often than I was. So I said, well, why Can don't you, you just take the minivan? Can you down and make it so we can't? Thank you. Oh. No, no, j no. Yeah, just, just play the video, yeah. I really apologize. I thought he was going to be able to do it and bring it home. I mean, I guess we can pot up a couple more times and see what he's like talking about, but this doesn't feel like it's a really good story and I feel like it's not a really great ending. And I apologize for that. I really look at him. He's still it's going. Weird to say now in her minivan. We were in her minivan. We were out driving around. <laughs> he's still he's talking about the minivan still. He hasn't even got past that. It's like a minute and a half into the story. God, it's crazy because he's like a storyteller. You know, he has a podcast, he has all of that stuff, he has a stream, and he does it perfectly fine. He's happy with himself, like he thinks he's doing a good job. And I've been on his show a number of times, and I always give it my all, I always try my hardest. And meanwhile, this is what we get from him. 
I can't even imagine. I mean, I will say if you do get your tires changed, like at Costco or anything like that, you need to be careful. <laughs> Your Costco. Why, why, why would you even get your tires changed there? This is a fucking nightmare. I'm not gonna lie. This guy fucked me again with one of his boring ass fucking stupid stories where nothing fucking happens. At least we were smart enough to fucking pot the guy down and we can listen to some classic fucking music. We all remember this hit, you know? So this is going, yeah, this is. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool, but I really this this obviously was not a hit. This was not this was not what we were looking for necessarily. I, think uh, I did end up getting off uh, on a, a technicality. I I did do it, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, legally speaking, uh, free and clear. So wait, sorry, wait, hey, go, hang on, go back. Uh, yeah, Can hang on. You know what? I actually got to run. Um, but this was really cool. Let's it was so to awesome to be back here with you guys again. I hope this is an awesome. Top three weekend. Oh, you guys oh. rock. Uh, thanks for having me. But uh, yeah, peace. I'll see. I'll, oh Chris, I'll talk to you later. And don't forget, give me some of that money you get from the uh, th from the drinks and stuff. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> I want to stress to all the guests Cause I'm not sure what it is you've been told It is my job now to tell you all There'll be no refunds on the ticket so hold Come at me, you'll get rolled There'll be no refunds on the ticket, so I'll punch you even if you're old. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. Thank you uh, to Ben. Ben, come on up, Ben. Give it up for Ben. Ben, yeah, Ben. Yeah. And I uh, give it up to Queebs and Queeber and Dern and Stefan and John. And thanks so much. And I'm not gonna, I'm not doing the uh, not even a show anymore, much like the block party. Um, I just decided, I just wanted to, I know a lot of people know that, but I just thought it would be kind of a cool thing because they're gonna do it on the late show. And it was, I thought it was kind of cool to take the wind out of their sails. Thanks so much. Have a good night.